that wasn't a really tough match at all, if I'm being honest. Like, it shocked me a little bit. Like, he's nowhere near as physical as I thought he was going to be. Mm. Um, like, it's not close. Like, when everyone's saying, like, Nicky Rod's going to be the first person to meet Gordon, that is just absolute bollocks. Because I've fought Nicky Rod and I've rolled with Gordon. <laughs> I felt fine with Nicky and I got bummed by Gordon. <laughs> it's like, I won the Commonwealth Games when it was in Glasgow mm -hmm. in 2014. But there's actually, like, I mean, had 10 World Cup medals as well, which five of them were in Olympic qualification year. <laughs> and, like, I needed something else. So, genuinely, like, I'm not going to lie about it. Like, I'd work. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I'd just be pissed. I was drinking every Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and I swapped for a partner. And he uses the same lad all the time as his partner. Um, and if the lad just like got one thing wrong, he'd like slap him or <laughs> just slap him. Just shut him. Like he could have took my clothes off if he wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, man, scurry, scurry. He's on top of me and think never felt like this before. Mate, I'll, I'll watch that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, mate, he's sick. Oh, freak athlete, that little Fabricio. He's all arms, mate, isn't he? Yeah, mate, he's just like. <laughs> I felt no threat at all, mm. but he's just a super athlete. He's just like I was at 22. Yeah. I mean, it's the first time I fought someone and I felt 32. Yeah, okay. And okay. first time I felt a little bit weathered. Yeah. Sometimes, like you say, you get, you get a young 20 year old, yeah. a cardio silly, even if they're like smaller, you know yeah. what I mean? It don't really matter. Literally. He was just faster, more explosive. Does mm. he make you with the big guns? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He's, got just, just, yeah. Mate, he's tiny, isn't he? Yeah. But his arms yeah. are bigger than his Honestly, head. Yeah, it's yeah. ridiculous. He's in some. We were watching it when we say looks like this. Yeah, mate. I've been watching him for like, a couple of years because he obviously came through with like Mika Gavao and stuff, didn't he? Yeah. And um, yeah, he jacked, mate. Yeah, he's so powerful. Like. Mm. Yeah. All right, cool. I'll do a quick intro, mate, and then we'll just dive straight in. Um, we're quite interested to hear a little bit about your judo background as well, mate. Because yeah, we've covered right. a few different martial arts on the podcast, but not judo so much yet. So go through that, mate, and then just work our way through your journey and then, yeah, chat about some of the more recent stuff you've done, mate, if that's all right. No problem. Your surname, mate, is it pronounced Livesey? Livesey, yeah. Livesey. Fucking hell, mate. It's one of the first people ever that said it right. <laughs> mate, it's only because I was watching matches last night to try and learn the pronunciation. Yeah, but they, they say different ways, don't they? I've had <laughs> lives there, Livesey. Yeah, Livesey. Just all right, me. Livesey. Livesey. Yeah, perfect. All right, cool. Welcome back to the Everyday Perspective podcast. Please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Today's guest is UK grappler Owen Livesey. Owen, how are you, mate? Yeah, I'm good, mate. Thanks for having us, lads. Pleasure, mate. Good. Long journey down, mate, was it? Yeah, from all about seven and a half hours. Yeah, so fucking hours. Long way. journey, yeah. yeah. Early as well. Yeah. Too early for me, but <laughs> yeah. thanks for coming in, mate. Appreciate it. No worries. Um, so we were just chatting off air, mate, that obviously you, I think, do your own podcast. Yeah, done a bit. We did start one there. Yeah. yeah, so I think I saw an episode back in August um, where you were chatting about some of your time out in America and everything else. So it'd be good to cover some of that, but you've done a load, a load since. Yeah. So it'd be good to get onto all that sort of stuff as well. And I think most people watching this video will probably know you and, and what you do. We do have quite a broad audience, some of which aren't necessarily jujitsu guys or grapplers. Yeah. Um, they might be able to guess by looking at you. <laughs> but are you able to explain a little bit about what it is that you do? So yeah. your your sort of the martial arts that you do and the, the belts and everything else? Yeah, so I've basically started judo when I was like eight years old. So I've done judo all my life. I'm like 32 now. Um, when I was 15, I left home to train judo full time. Trained full time at Camberley Judo Club for about eight years. Um, when I finished judo, I moved over to Hull because I got a, coach to rest, a job as a wrestling coach for a rugby team. Uh, that which was a full-time job, so I relocated to Hull. Then I ended up having two professional MMA fights. Uh, at the same time I was training judo, I was training Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu as well. So then I ended up opening my own gym on the side, which ended up being pretty successful to the point where I could quit the job and just make the gym full-time. And then ended up just competing in some grappling and that's gone pretty well as well i'm still doing that today yeah happy days mate thank you and uh so judo so i think are you looking at wiki uh second dan black yeah, belt yeah second dan like i i could be higher yeah so, like the way it works in judo is like if you're into dance so if you want to be a very yeah. very high dan basically you can like record your wins in tournaments okay if you record your wins in tournaments a certain amount of points will give you a Dan. Right, okay. I've just not recorded my wins. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like to me, when I got I got my black belt when I was 16, which yeah. is like, I'm, I think, I'm not sure if it's the same now, but that was the age that you had to be to be able to fight for your black belt. 
So I fought for my black belt, got that. I, just the way I've always looked at it, probably regret it a bit now, is a black belt's a black belt. I wasn't that bothered about Getting collecting dad. points to get dance. The only reason I got my second dan was because I never had a competition that weekend and you had to fight for your second dan. So I just went and got some matches, mm. which is why I ended up with a second dan. But then I've not gone back to Graydon's because I got so busy with the competitive, competitive side of judo and I didn't go down the point collecting route either. So mm -hmm. if I actually went back, recorded my competitions, I could probably get a lot higher than the second dan that I've got at the minute. Yeah, and what's your uh, what was your sort of highest accolade in, in judo? Uh, everyone thinks it's like Commonwealth Games. Like I won the Commonwealth Games when it was in Glasgow mm -hmm. in 2014. But there's actually like, we had 10 World Cup medals as well, which five of them were in Olympic qualification year or Olympic year. So like people within the judo circle will know that them, them tournaments are like far bigger than the Commonwealth Games. So I'd probably say personally, some of the World Cups that I've won where I've beat some like Olympic medalists and stuff will be my personal biggest achievements. Mm -hmm. But to other people they see the Commonwealth Games, it's obviously more renowned yeah. outside of judo. Mm -hmm. and, and for the judokas listening, who's the sort of most notable names that you fought and beat? Um, if you can pronounce them. Ivan, <laughs> yeah, Ivan Nafontov was a world champion Olympic bronze medalist I fought and beat him in a um, World Cup in Santiago, Chile. Uh, Attila Ongvari, like everyone who does judo and all the Ongvari brothers. Um, I beat him in Chile, he's also beat me as well. Um, I had, like, I, there's a Montenegrin lad who was a world silver medalist, Moralovic, his name was, Sergej Moralovic. I don't know why it was, but like to the back end of my judo career, I must have got drawn against him like neat every second tournament. Like, <laughs> so we had about seven matches back and forth, yeah. And I think he beat me like 4 3 over the seven matches, so. I've had, I've had some good wins like mm. on the international stage. Yeah, decent. And when you said you went and trained full time, I think a lot of people think about grappling sports, think about jujitsu, and they hear about these guys that that do it full time. But personally, I've never heard of anybody doing that with judo. So what does that what does that typically look like? So like judo is like because it's an Olympic sport. Like when when I find with jujitsu is people train full time, but it's just like kind of within their gyms. There's not like a professional setup, mm. if you get what I mean. It's like there's just a gym there that has a full time schedule and they just turn up and do the sessions like people do at mine now. But with judo being an Olympic sport, there's actually a full a full setup. So you can like relocate. The gym will provide absolutely everything. Um, so we were provided Luke Preston was the judo the head head coach at Camden Judo Club, so we'd like run two sessions a day. But then we get provided a strength and conditioning coach who programmed it for us, depending on what tournaments we had coming up. He like programmed the full cycle, so we were peaking up to that tournament. Um, so I moved, I was based in St. Helens as a kid, and I moved to Surrey, Camberley. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure how far it is for me. It was about five hours from where yeah. I was living. Yeah, probably the same for me. It's yeah, it's probably yeah, everywhere it's far from yeah. me. <laughs> so Camberley Judo Club's like basically, a, it's like a dorm. It's literally on bricks. Um, there's like one living room, one kitchen, you all get a cupboard each. Uh, there's like a school corridor type thing with like 10 bedrooms and all the bedrooms have got bum beds. Um, and you've got like 20 athletes living in this building. So it's not a great place to live in terms of facility wise and the, the state of the place. Like it, it's been done up recently. When we were there, it was like, phew, it'd be a bucket in the middle of the living room because the floor would just be leaking. No fucking way. Around, literally mate. Like, I'd wake up at 3 a.m. every night without fail, just listening to what sounded like 10 mice just running oh. riot in the drawers, just fucking ruining <laughs> Fuck everything. That. Literally, it was <laughs> like, can't believe you have to be go and see it to believe mm. it. Like, there's no locked doors. So, like, all the doors are just pushed to open fire doors, and none of them fit in the hole. So, like, you just open your door by, like, just grabbing the side and just pulling it. But it never got broke into because it was like 20 blocks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, you fucking stupid, yeah. you? <laughs> But everything's on site. It's like, mm. back then, like, it's really weird. Like, now I'm earning a little bit of money through having a gym and competing different, like, income streams and that. And I felt like I had more money then. It's like then I had no money. I was getting about 120 quid a week. But you just had no concerns over yeah. mm. your sport. I was just paying 50 quid for food every week. And I'd have about 70 quid left over and I'd just sit in this dorm, I'd train next door 
I'd come back, I'd eat, I'd go and train again, come back, I'd sleep. That must have been so good though, to live that life for a while. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like how many people get that opportunity? It must, you know. It's pros and cool. cons. It's like, it's an absolutely great life. And like by far easily, the best times I've ever had was was, was when I was training mm. full time. Yeah. Like I made some like proper mates that yeah. like, I've not seen them for like four years now, but if I bumped into them, it'd be like I'd seen them yesterday. Yeah. Like mm. really good mates. But at the same time, like, you have absolutely nothing out of that. You know what I mean? Like I couldn't go, I couldn't go away for a weekend because I just simply didn't have the money to do that. So it was just like, you were just all eggs in one basket. Did you feel like that um, training full time like progressed you faster? Yeah. But you was just like being in there, living, eating, breathing, that yeah. fucking that it, Like we progressed so fast in that building. Like yeah. I, don't, I, I remember like I'd never had a British championship medal ever. Um, I'd won like cadet, which is like under 17 British championships. Mm. I'd won the junior British championships, which was under 20. But when I moved to Camberley, I'd never had a British senior medal. Um, and literally like within 12 months, I won gold. So like I, I went from never having one to being a British champion. Cause it's just like, it's a, it's a mix of a few different things. It's like training partners, all your training partners are like top of the top, like 2014 Commonwealth games, like, you've only got seven men in different weights that represent Team England and three of us got gold from Cambler, which is only a small place um, and three of us actually won won the games That's from the same team um, so that was the calibre of people you were training with but at the same time you were just living it studying it watching judo all the time you, just, you didn't have space for anything else yeah, it's fucking... It's mad. Surreal. And how long did you do that for, you say? Uh, it would have been about eight years. Fucking hell, mate. Yeah. <laughs> There's lads that's done it longer, mate. There's still Is some it? lads there now, yeah. It's just... It's like... I was always one that, like, always thought about what I was going to do after it. Mm. So, like, because you had no money... Like, the reason I stopped was because I got to about 26 and I had genuinely had no money. And I was just thinking, like, I'm 26 now, like, don't what do I want to do after this? Yeah. Like, How long are you going to do it for? Yeah, yeah, like, am I going to have kids in future? Like, mm, yeah. what am I going to do money-wise? Like, I want a house eventually. And, like, at that point, it was just absolutely a million miles from every every area that I was thinking about, which is the main reason why I quit. But it's very easy in that environment to ignore that because you're having a great time. Like, you, if you enjoy training, you're just doing that all day. Mm. And then between it, you literally just sat in the front room with your best mates, either going for a nap or playing FIFA. <laughs> so it's just like, <laughs> sounds, I live sounds like this like forever. It's like a fucking great life. Literally, life. yeah, no. Yeah, no, it sounds class. So time just flies. It, it, it sounds kind of like, you know, when you speak to like professional footballers, isn't it? Mm. They just, when, when we've had footballers on, they, they just love that lifestyle, don't they? And the only difference really is that they get paid a fucking load yeah. of money. Yeah. You know what I mean? Literally. Like, that's why they, they never want to quit. Yeah. Speak to Ben, he's towards the end of his career now. Mm. But you can see that he's just like, I don't want to fucking quit. I don't mm. want to fucking quit because they know how good they got it. Yeah. It'd be the same for you when, if the money was there. Oh, man, if the money was there, I'd still be there now. Yeah. I'd still be there now. But because of that, it's hard when you quit as well. No. When I quit, I was just like, fucking hell, what do I do now? Mm. Like, it wasn't just a smooth transition to jujitsu because I had never had it in my head that I wanted to compete in jujitsu. Like, to me, it was just, I was doing jujitsu to help with judo. Mm hmm. And all my goals were judo. So I genuinely never had one idea in my head at all. Even when I opened my own gym, that I was going to compete in grappling. Like, it was never, ever a goal. So mm. when you opened your own gym, was it a judo gym? No, was I opened like a grappling gym. Because grappling? Cause my thought process with it was, I trained jiu-jitsu at that point for about six years anyway, alongside judo. Um, I was a purple belt at the time, but I'd been a purple belt for like three years. And... My idea with it was if I open a judo club, no one's going to come. Because, mm. like, as massive of a sport judo is in the world, in England, it just gets zero recognition. So I thought if I open a judo club, no one's going to come. But if I open a jiu-jitsu club, but when everyone comes, I'm teaching this hybrid style of judo, wrestling and yeah. jiu-jitsu. Once they're in the door, I'm pretty confident that they'll enjoy what we do and they'll stay. So it was just a Carlson Gracie gym because I was training under Carlson Gracie. So they let me have their name. But at the same time, I thought if I can push it as that, once everyone's in the door and they see what we're doing, they'll stay, which kind of worked. And did you say that you were a wrestling coach for a rugby team for a bit as well? Yeah, so, you know, you know rugby league? 
Uh, not so I much. Know a little bit, he yeah. does. Yeah. Sure. In rugby league, obviously the, the top league's called Super League. Yeah. So that's like the professional teams. Um, so when I was like 15 years old, I nipped home back up north for two weeks. And I was just in a weights gym training. And the gym that I was training in Warrington Wolves were using for indoor training during their pre season. Yeah. And the coach came up to me like, Do you do judo? I was like, Yeah, I do a bit. Like, And he said, um, Would you mind doing a wrestling session with the lads now? And we'll pay you. So I was like, Oh, I can do it. So I just like pulled the session out my ass. <laughs> I like, taught this session, like, I had no idea if they enjoyed it or not. He said, thanks. Two weeks later, I've gone back down south. And it's so weird. It was about, literally, you're talking like seven years later. I'm on the verge of quitting judo, like, but not having a clue what I'm going to do next. And I just got a random phone call. And um, it was a bloke from OKR. And he just said, oh, is that Owen? I said, yeah. He said, um, you taught a, a wrestling session to Warrington Wolves about seven years ago do you remember and I was like I do remember doing it but like what's this about and he was like oh um, the guy Richard Agar the coach at the time he's a good friend of mine and he's recommended you right so would you want a job so I'm thinking like job I said what has he was like it'd be a strength conditioning coach I said mate I'd love to do that but I know I'm nowhere near qualified because I've got zero qualifications to do that so he said no if you come across we'll pay you as an SSC coach but really you'll be a wrestling coach so I was like sound and I just moved over to all about two <laughs> weeks later <laughs> how, do Rus- how do rugby lads get on with wrestling I guess they're kind it's, of good in some sense but not in the other yeah it's like a massive part of the game mm, but huge. they don't like doing it mm. like it was an absolute ball ache to be fair like half of them would come in and be like why are we doing this and to me I was like lads if you don't want to do it like Fuck, fuck off, off. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't sure you were allowed to yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. so I was like lads if you don't want to do it fuck off so like I kind of had a decent group that enjoyed doing it mm-hmm. um, but it is a huge part of the game especially in league now because it's all about slowing down the rook yeah. and if you can control that play the ball it gives you mates time to get back and set the line mm-hmm. so yeah, my, my lad started rugby. Job. My lad started yeah. rugby, but he does a bit of jiu-jitsu. And I say, I say to him all the time, I was like, mate, so important. Yeah. So important to be able to shoot, to be able to like, do your stand-up for jiu-jitsu. It is. Because it transfers. I watch the lads when they're playing rugby, and that shot, if you get good at it, yeah. fucking hell, it's a game-changer. Yeah. You know it's I mean? small things as well that I found with them. It's like, you had like huge, powerful Samoan lads mm. with no idea how to actually use the weight. I was about to say that we had we had at our gym a little while ago a lovely lad big Samoan rugby lad probably plays you know maybe semi-professional or professional I don't know but he's a fucking big boy come in and he started doing jiu-jitsu and you know what it's like coming in doing jiu-jitsu as nothing like yeah. you're but he was so like unaware of his body I was really surprised because I thought doing rugby at a high level he would have you know what I mean like his pressure game would be fucking oh, really good and, and then he just he just didn't have a have a clue it how to actually use his weight and I was like come on, mate like put it in a bit like, it is, uh, it's just yeah. all about like smashing each yeah. other throwing each other to the floor whereas like they really miss when you land how to like hold someone there for yeah. a couple of seconds while everyone gets back and yeah. not letting them scramble to a play of the ball and that so there is massive gains for rugby players mm. do, doing a bit of cross training mm. yeah fair one and then you said you were doing a bit of cross training between judo and jiu-jitsu and yeah. by the time you left the camp you were a purple belt I assume you're a black belt now mm. when did you get your black belt be about a year ago now was it quite so recent it wasn't, yeah it wasn't yeah, that okay. long ago so when you broke onto the scene in, in sort of jiu-jitsu grappling it was was it about 2021 2020 somewhere around there when was your I first did, major I, comp I did my first my first ever jiu-jitsu match was grapple first okay and that was a, it'll be a, it weren't long after I opened the gym it would have been about 2019 yeah okay it was funny really because I genuinely weren't training at all like I had no I, I had no no idea of or no thought process about competing in grappling I just opened the gym it was for my mental health a little bit because I'd started working I never had a job in my life I'd just been a full time athlete and when I stopped I got really excited about teaching wrestling to a professional rugby team like I had the thought process on that like this is going to be quality all these lads are going to be big units like they're going to come in smash wrestling then I can watch them all play rugby at the class it just wasn't like that at all um and like I needed something else so genuinely like I'm not going to lie about it like I'd work Friday, Saturday, Sunday I'd just be pissed I was drinking every Friday, Saturday, Sunday and I was thinking this is fucking awful 
So I went to some local gyms and in Hull there was just nothing. Like I'd tried two separate gyms. I was just like a little bunch of students and I just needed something to like make me want to go back. Mm. So I said to my missus, I was like, I'm all I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna find try and find my own place. Open it on a Tuesday, Thursday. I'm not even gonna teach anything. It's just gonna be Tuesday, Thursday. If you wanna spar, if you wanna like grapple spar, Tuesdays are no gi and when uh, Thursdays are gi, and that's it. I'm just gonna turn up, put some music on, roll with each other and leave. So I didn't know anyone in Hull either at all. It was a completely new place. So I've put it on my face, but then I'm opening this gym. No idea who's turning up. And I was very lucky because I knew one lad in the area that did judo and his dad owned the factory that they made glass windows. So his dad says to me, if you teach our Tommy, if you teach my son tw uh, twice a week, I'll let you use the gym for free. You don't have to pay rent or anything. So it was like perfect. And it was tiny though. It was about, the mat space was about five meters by six. Oh, really small. Man. So I come in on the first night and 36 people were there. And I just looked, at, honestly, man, I looked at the room and I thought, fucking hell, what am I gonna do? <laughs> like, the, like the room was absolutely rammed. So I just had a massive brain fart and I'm like, right, everyone jog around and like, they just couldn't even move. Like you had like three <laughs> lanes of people running around this mat. We all like made a session out of it somehow, but when they left, I said to my missus like, they're not coming back. That was terrible. That's the worst session I ever ran. We kept about 15 of them. Um, we did every Tuesday, Thursday until it started getting even busier and we just slowly started adding new nights. So then we got to about four nights a week and we were starting to earn a bit of cash then. Everyone was paying every time they come. So I said to my missus, why don't we get somewhere a little bit better? So we found like an old community club that was only charging us 500 quid a month. So we could just about afford that. And I was still working full time with KR anyway. So I wasn't looking at the gym as a profit anyway. It would just like cover the cost so we can train. So we just moved into this place and then Chris Thompson from Grapplefest sent me a message. And he was like, we've got some black belts Masters one world bronze medalist or something. And he's like, his opponent's just pulled out, but it's next week and it's at 85 kilos. He's like, if you just fancy a grapple. And I'd never grappled, competed <laughs> in my life. So I was like, check my weight. I was like 94 kilo and I wasn't even training. So I was like, yeah, fuck it, I'll do it. <laughs> and um, it was literally the week after. So I, I just did water loading because that's all yeah. I knew from judo days. So I just started water loading, started joining in with everyone sparring that week. And I had that much weight to lose. I had three kilos left on the Saturday morning. So we have a wrestling session on the Saturday hours. So I literally joined in with everyone, trained wrestling Saturday morning, then got in my car, drove over to Liverpool with my sweatsuit on, jumped on the scales, made weight, and then fought that night and, and won by decision, but it was like a terrible performance. That was my first one. <laughs> You've just been fucking dying inside after Oh, that. man, it's terrible, yeah. I just thought I'd never do so that again. so much weight to fucking um, lose. Yeah. It's not worth it. Obviously, nah. you had to do it for that, but yeah. like, you know what I mean? It's never, never fucking worth it. Nah. When, did you, uh, when did you make the transition out of the gi? Because I assume training judo, it's pretty much primarily always in the gi? Yeah, but like I was really lucky because when I did judo, it had leg grabs. Okay. So do you know, like they changed the rules. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, so when I started judo, it was basically wrestling in the gi. It was like, and it was that much light wrestling that I'd train judo Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And I'd train freestyle wrestling Tuesday, Thursday, mm. because it was genuinely just putting a gi on and doing freestyle wrestling. Everyone was just grabbing the legs, like firemen's, which is what they'd call a uh, They'd have like a T-groomer, double-legged, they call it something else. Um, so it was basically wrestling the gi, which meant a lot of our work as well. We just took the gis off. So a lot of the times we sparred, we actually took the jackets off because like, if you looked at like Russian judo players, Georgian judo players, their style was to just fully engage, like mm -hmm. just lock up, like over under position, double unders, double overs, and just try and pick you up. So if you weren't playing with that style, you just get found out. Um, so I trained like that for about 10 years. And then when they took the leg grabs out, then I just had to like, not change my judo, I just had to take the leg grabs away from what I was doing. But because we've been doing judo, we still have the hip throws and that as well. So I've kind of had the best of both worlds. Mm. Yeah, fair one. So since then, I guess you've you've had quite a few notable opponents. So I've jotted down a few. So obviously, um, I think you've you you got uh, I think a late invite for ADCC as well, didn't you? Yeah, I did. I think yeah. and, and fought Kane and Duarte on there. I think you've yeah. fought Chris Weidman. Um, 
Fabrizio Andre and, and Nicky Rod more recently as well. Yeah. Um, so, so today, who would you say your kind of toughest fight was? Talk through some of the recent matches you've had. So, well, yeah, like like you said, I've had some some tough matches in like the last eighteen months. Um, but they've they've all been tough in different ways. It's like Chris Weidman, I won, but it was super tough. Like it's probably the most physical match I've ever had. Like he just had an absolute engine on him and just didn't stop and we were both just absolutely launching each other all over the place and I was exhausted after that. Um, but then obviously some of the other matches have lost as well. Um, I drew with Nicky Rod. That wasn't a really tough match at all, if I'm being honest. Like it shocked me a little bit. Like he was nowhere near as physical as I thought he was going to be. Mm. Um, most of the time he just fights from a half kneeling position just tries to double leg you on entry. Um, Kynan is phenomenal. Like, he's mm. won ADCC twice. He's a fucking monster, isn't he? Yeah. He's watching that. Like, he's just the strongest guy I've ever felt, mate. <laughs> just like, yeah, he didn't do like, like when I went to New Wave, I'm rolling with some people and they're doing stuff I've never seen. They're doing like, unbelievable, like off balancing you. Yeah. Things like that. And you just can't, you feel like you can't set anything up. You can't like, have a solid base anywhere. It was like kind of work like that. He wasn't doing anything where I was like, what What was that? But it was just, if he got on top of you, he was just smothering. Like, I've never felt anyone that strong. Yeah, he looks he looks strong. <laughs> Doesn't yeah. he? he looks like he's... Ridiculous. And then there's obviously Fabricio. <coughs> Fabricio is just a phenomenal talent. He's young, super athletic. And we had a really close match. It's mm. like, I threw him a few times and this is where grappling and judo differs like massively. Is like, in judo, if you throw, if I throw you and it starts on the mat and we land off the mat, I'm still winning. Mm. And like if I if our feet are in the area, or I throw you, but it started within the area, you land outside, I still get the points. Grappling's like that as well. Like if you're in ADCC, if you start, you throw someone, you land in position, mm -hmm. and you get the points. But yeah. Polaris, it wasn't like that. Like. A double legged Fabricio inside, we landed outside, double. just called stop. And Ayuchi matted him from the inside, we landed outside, nothing. Um, after that, I've nearly took him down about three more times, and he just hit one duck under on me. He mm. hit one duck under, which didn't even put my shoulders on the floor, I was just sat on my ass, and then I stood up. But because it was like a three second pause where I was sat on my ass, that was the one point. Um, but he, like Fabricio was a fucking phenomenal grappler you know what mm -hmm. I mean so I, I, f I enjoyed that match but all like genuinely physically all their matches were really tough mm -hmm. in different ways it'd be hard to choose which yeah. one's the hardest one so I feel like your style is uh, I mean watching you as well it's it's obviously you can see it's kind of quite judo and wrestling heavy I never really see you in any real sort of danger with like submissions or anything yeah um, I'm, I'm not even sure if you've been submitted in competition I don't think you have that I've seen have. you have one, once go on tell us about that get this quick, wrong because everyone will fucking <laughs> it's more than once I feel like it might be twice Hunter Colvin okay so it was my mistake it was stupid really it was a Polaris Grand Prix middleweight Grand Prix so I had to cut weight to 84 um, and I was 1-0 up no 2-1 up till about 30 seconds from the end and like fair play to him, but for me it was like hard to take because it was an horrendous mistake because like all the way through my judo career, we used to drill. If you're behind the, by a score, just engage because it's the best way to build pressure. So if I was behind by a score, it was drilled into us, more or less run at you and just engage, whether that's double unders, over under, double over, just lock your hips in because you don't know how he's going to react. Mm. So some like the good thing to do is to try and stand your ground, drop your hips back a little bit, circle off. But a lot of the times you do it, I'll I'll just engage with you. You'll like panic, turn away, and then I can count it. And he basically did that to me. Like oh, I, no. I spent ten years doing that. So like I was massively fatigued, and he's like ran at me. I think he's gone double unders, and I've gone over hook and tried to reach him at him, but my wizard slipped out. And he took me back and just, mate, when some of them lads get it, they do, I think they call it the mandible choke, where it's just like straight over oh, your jaw, man, fucking two awesome. elbows down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And everyone's like, wasn't even a choke. It's like, mate, that's fucking you can pressure. feel your jaw separating when yeah. that's done properly. Um, I think that, I think that's the only one. 
but I'm, there might be one more. I just can't remember. I'm sure people will forgive you, mate. Or remind them in the comments. <laughs> they won't, no. Yeah, put them in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> um, and where I was going with that was, I guess, with the more recent matches, like it doesn't ever look like you were really in threat. Did you feel with any of those that you thought that there was ever a, a danger of them catching you with anything? Or was it more no. just physical dominance in positions and that type of thing? It's more just tactical, mate. Like, I think, like, I... Like, people genuinely still... I always get it on Instagram. Like, people genuinely don't believe me when I say, like, I'm not a competitor like I'm a coach like now I don't see myself as a competitor at all like if you asked me my goals for the next two years as a grappler I wouldn't know because like I'm not planning any of it I've not planned any of it like I had no intentions of competing in grappling I got asked to do a match and said yeah people liked what they watched asked me to do a match on another show said yeah I've won some matches so I've just been offered others Um, so like when I'm training, like I ain't, I don't have a coach. Like I literally train under no one now. It's just my gym. Um, I do not drill whatsoever anymore. Like I have no time. I'd love to, but I have no time. Um, like my training now literally just consists of lifting weights three times a week and joining in at the end of the sessions that I teach and getting a handful of rounds four or five nights a week with the people that were in my gym. Mm. Like I ain't traveling around, training with different people. I'm not learning new things under new coaches. It's, um, so like, I feel like a lot of the matches I've lost, like I've drew a Nicky Rod, I've lost to Fabricio 1-0. Um, what was it before that? Kanan. Kanan beat me on points, like, I think it was about 8-0, like, he was pretty dominant to be fair to Kanan. Uh, beat Chris Weidman. I got caught by Emma State with Hunter Colvin. Uh, like the matches that I've lost, like Luke Griffith finished me. That's the second one. ADCC, the European final. He caught me with a rear naked as well. Mm. But the matches I've lost, like apart from the two that have been rear naked choked, they've just been like tactical mistakes because I'd, like when everyone says, What's your game plan? Like I ain't joking when I say I have none. Mm. Like, I'm just turning up to like. <laughs> I just enjoy competing. If mm-hmm. you stood up, I'm going to try and throw you. If you pull guard, I'm going to try and pass. If I get to a position, I'm going to try and submit. Like, it's literally as straightforward as that. And I think sometimes at the top level, you might need them tactics against some people. Mm-hmm. Like, maybe against Fabrizio, if I was a bit more tactical, I probably could have won that with it being so close. And I'm more or less certain that he came into that match with a game plan. Mm-hmm. Whereas I just came in empty-minded and just went out there to try and put a good match on for everyone mm. so I think that can cost you sometimes at, at the higher level yeah no I think you're right I think some of the uh, those sort of bigger gyms that compete and, and win a lot there's a lot of tactics I think you're absolutely yeah. right there, 100% so I, I saw on your last podcast that you did um, I think you were doing a Q&A and got a couple of Nicky Rod questions which you fucking didn't really enjoy at the time <laughs> I think primarily it's because you don't you were like I fucking don't know the guy I've never trained with him never going to beat against him Obviously, you've now competed against him. Um, you mentioned already you were a bit surprised at his lack of physicality. Yeah. And we all know that you think he's a bit of a pussy. Yeah. Um, what are your thoughts now? I know you had a bit of a back and forth with him online as well. Uh, mate, I don't know him that much, but of what I've seen, it's just all for Instagram. Like, I'm just not like that. Like, my Instagram blew up a little bit last year, but that was just from, like, matches and highlight reels. It wasn't from me trying like I'm terrible like I'm terrible on social media and that I'm just not about that at all I think it's very different for English people at times I don't know why I think Americans are a lot more outspoken they're a lot yeah. they find it a lot easier I think I don't yeah, know yeah. English people well, in we, general we just more we don't yeah. we don't like to praise ourselves or each other no. we, really, so <laughs> yeah. that's what it is I think and that's him in a nutshell time, that's, it, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's him in a nutshell yeah. like he looks the part loves Instagram loves social media mm. loves spouting shit on social media as well like when we were having like back and forth on Instagram and that, we were in the same hotel. Like, it was bizarre. <laughs> and <I'm> like, <laughs> See him at breakfast. Honestly, no, late. mate, he actually got like that though. Did so it? like, I'm in the room and my missus and like, the inst- the Instagram's going wild. To the point where I just turn my notifications off now, it's just a joke. And we're going back and forth, back and forth, and it's getting pretty heated. Is it? Um, so I'm in my room and then I said to my missus, should we go and get some scram? She says, yeah. So we're getting it lift and you could mate, you couldn't write it, honestly. I've got in a lift, I'm studying lift with my missus, and it comes down to reception. 
and it pings and the doors open. As the doors open, the other one's pinged, the doors open, and then you're all locked out. <laughs> and you know when you're almost like, oh, what, what's going to happen here? And then, like, after everything he'd just been saying, he just, like, touches his knuckles. And it's just like, in that moment, I thought everything, everything is just for social media. Do you know what I mean? And I'm just... It must be weird seeing the other like side that. of that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because you see it a lot, don't you, with, you know, top grapplers and this and that, where they, they talk shit to each other and then afterwards they're like best mates it's just promotion it's just promotion isn't it it definitely is it's just I'm not used to that like judo is just so like mate because judo does not get anywhere near the recognition it deserves in this country like the athletes on a world level in judo are just absolutely ridiculous really oh mate it's honestly like Olympic level judo is it's so high it's the level is so high um which is why, like, I'm able to compete at a very high level in grappling without even training properly. Like, if I trained like I am now and competed where I used to compete in judo, I am not getting through a first round, ever. So say, like, in a tournament day, you're having five matches, I ain't getting through the first round training how I am now. Like, absolutely not. But there's just no shit talking. I understand why it happens, like, because it sells matches, it sell it gets all the clout on instagram which then you can sell instructionals to i get it yeah. i'm selling stuff myself but in judo it's just not like that like you just got the, some of the best athletes you'll ever see in your life and they're all just the nicest people going but when they're on the mat they fight like fuck do you think that's why jiu-jitsu may never be like an olympic sport now i don't think it wants to be me though i don't think it does it's, it's going to more towards like you know with ufc fight pass doing their thing it's going to more towards that, isn't it? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? More towards that sort yeah. of side. I mean, they can see the money. Which yeah. is better though. Yeah, for way, way more fun, yeah. fun yeah. isn't it? And especially the top athletes because they'll end up earning more money. It's probably like, it's fucking hard now, isn't it? But in 10 years, mate, it's going to be, it's going to be fucking silly, isn't it? I bet, I bet there's quite a lot of people making money now though as well. Yeah, it's like got to be. The top, instructionals, top. like not just, like there's a lot more, I think, to make money from than the matches. Mm. Like I don't think there's many people getting paid a lot for matches. Mm. But I think you can make a lot of money outside your matches, mm. especially if you if you build that following, like yeah. you are now, and you yeah. you know you're building your following, you're fucking doing well. Yeah. And the the offshoots of your success, again, is not through the 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 actual competing just provides you a platform to be able to make money. That's exactly on, it, on yeah. other other things, isn't it? Yeah. That's why you do it. Yeah, you know? it, is, yeah. mm. it could, because it makes you relevant. We talk about it all the time relevancy with people, people in the now that are competing and doing stuff. It makes them way more relevant. Yeah. And then people want to, you know, watch, listen, engage, you know. Yeah. So they want that beef, don't they? Yeah, they do, yeah. You got any more thoughts to do MMA? Mate, I would honestly, like, it's one of, like, I do think I'll regret it because it is one thing that I would really have liked to have had a dig at. But the position I'm in now, it's just really hard to do. Hmm. Like, it's, um, I'm just so busy now. Like, I almost wish it. It's a really hard thing because I almost wish I'd quit judo five years earlier so I could have a, I could have had a real dig at it because I love everything about the sport and I've trained it quite a bit, um, I fought twice. But at the same time, judo has kind of given me what I've got now as well. So I, wouldn't, I, don't, I watch, sometimes I wonder if I'd have what I've got now if I had quit judo earlier. Mm. But it's just like, it's like I said already with the grappling, I'm not training that much training relatively hard um i don't cut weight like half the time i've been fighting 99 i've been walking at 92 just eating whatever i want um i've got a i've got a match with josh barnett in six days and that's it he's like 120 kilo <laughs> i just said yeah because he's, he's like the, the venues around the corner from my mum so right. i'm not even getting paid for that match I just said, yeah, because my mum's around the corner. So I was like, I'll go and see my mum and I'll just wrestle Josh Barnett on the way home. You know? <laughs> um, but yeah, like the MMA, it's just a much bigger commitment. You know what I mean? Like if I was ever to go into MMA, I have to travel a little bit for striking. Uh, although we do have some really good striking coaches in my gym now, that would definitely pad me. But I have to travel for sparring partners. Um, obviously the massive weight cuts mm -hmm. that you've got to take into account and to actually like live the life I live now like running a gym full time like I'm teach I teach about 16 sessions a week in my gym I've got a kid now it's like to do all of that 
And at the beginning as well, you're not going, you're not making money at the beginning. You know I mean, I'm not going to walk into MMA and make big money straight away. Mm. It's like you got to go through that process, and I respect that. But at 32, with a full time gym and a kid, I can't. Like if I was cutting weights, the quality of the sessions that I'm running in my gym would just dip. I mean, <laughs> be fucking angry. Yeah, like, and you've got to be selfish as well. I think, yeah. like, when I was doing judo, mate, I was like so selfish. There's no room for like one single other thing. If I was going to do MMA, it'd almost have to be like that again. Whereas now I've just got too many things that I kind of put over. And again, that. if you if you're financially not needing to do that, I always think that's a big barrier. Barrier, yeah. because. <sighs> Whether, whether people want to admit or not, do you want to really get punched in the face at 32, maybe fucking yeah. get savage injuries, this and that, for fuck all money? Because yeah. the money's only fucking later, isn't it? It is. And it is like, I, lo I do love competing though. I do love like a, a challenge. I mean, I love, yeah. if like, if someone offered me quite a bit of money to fight someone, I would definitely say, <laughs> yeah, because I do just like the thought of like, right, I've got eight weeks. I've got to do this. I've got to do that. I've got to get my weight on the control. I've got to get in really good shape to have a fight like that gets me really excited you know what I mean I do really enjoy it but the longer the time goes there's less chance of me doing it mm. so um, I'm becoming more comfortable with what I've got and enjoying what I'm doing yeah it's definitely a young man sport I think isn't yeah, it mate, yeah. like especially now <laughs> grappling's becoming the same like you see who's coming through now you've got like 17 year olds who are absolutely ridiculous what's that lad like, they've just fucking done the, the trials, ADCC yeah. trials who, they, he's a wrestler isn't he Little but he American does a bit of B team yeah. what's he fucking called He's an absolute little savage. Yeah. Absolute little savage. Yeah, and he is, fuck uh, me, mate. He's going to be... It, well, he already is, but I mean, he's going to be fucking ridiculous. Mm. Even there were two laws, though, still. Oh, like 20... 20. Two, 21? Yeah, 21, yeah. 21. And one of them's already ADCC world champion. Mm -hmm. It's like... You've got people like that coming through MMA as well. Mm. You know what I mean? You're 32, like, <laughs> learning the game. Yeah. Some prodigies coming through and going to kick your head off. It's mm. like... I've been doing it since I fucking six. Yeah. You know I mean? like, yeah, mate. It's fucking scary now definitely scary so mate when you um, when you do have a big match coming up and you do have a bit of time to prep can you talk us through what your sort of camp would look like in regard to your split of grappling SNC and that type of thing yeah so like it wouldn't change at all so I will live so I like I don't have camps at all I just train all year um, and like obviously now I'm a coach and that like the way I train is a little bit different so like I don't really get time to drill but the way I like almost drill is I like going to sparring with specific focuses so I've like ten submissions that I might want to hit or a specific style of passing that I want to work or if I'm fighting someone who's an equally good wrestler and might put me on my back then I'll work quite a bit off my back just in case I end up there so I'll slip little things into my sparring like that mm. but in terms of like volume how I'm training it doesn't change at all so that would be a Monday I do my strength conditioning so I, have, I actually have a coach for that now that I go and train with one to one uh, Monday night we spa in my gym I call that Mad Monday because it's fucking mental like, <laughs> we get a load of people on there sometimes we even throw a DJ in the corner as well so DJ <laughs> just going fucking, just off the council estate you just got top on you've got gold teeth you just go and fucking hell for leather on a CrossFit box and everyone's just fighting uh, Tuesday morning I go over to my mate's gym, Jack Grant. He's a good MMA fighter. Um, he went five rounds of Ian Gary for the Cage Warriors world title. Mm. Um, lost on decision. So I grapple with him on a Tuesday morning at his place. And then Tuesday night, I just go in and just do a bit of weights again, like on my own now, just a bit of volume. Uh, Wednesday, I see my own s coach again. Wednesday night, I spar at my place. Thursday, I'll probably do some cardio. Just, um, Blech. yeah, no, it's, <laughs> it's literally just because there's no sparring on a Thursday. Um, I teach two sessions, well, three sessions, but there's not really sessions that I can jump in with. Friday and midday, we have an open mat, so I'll spar, and then I'll lift weights again on Friday night, and then I'll wrestle on a Saturday morning. So, mm. still training 10 times a week, it's just not focused around me as much. So, it sounds like you, you kind of put a bit of weight into strength training then, y yeah, it's like. The it's, it's, <laughs> some of them just fill gaps so like Monday, Wednesday like my important sessions mm. so like if I was to now start taking everything super seriously again I'd just keep them two sessions like the Tuesday, Friday sessions are not necessary I just do them to like do something mm. it's um, from being a full time athlete I struggle 
Like I couldn't just have a Thursday and do nothing. So that's why I'd do some cardio or something. Like there's no way I could just sit in my house on a th midweek Thursday, not doing any exercise. Yeah. Um, so like a Tuesday or Friday and that Thursday session really, is just because I'm filling a gap. It's not needed at all. Mm. Um, in terms of actual strength condition, I'd just say the Monday, Wednesday that I do with the, my coach one to one. Mm -hmm. Is probably the only ones that I absolutely need. Yeah. Doing. And in those sessions, do you do, um, is it sort of big compound lifts? Is it sort of deadlift, squat, those type of movements? Or is it more sort of Olympic lifting, so snatch, clean and jerk and that sort of thing? We don't do Olympic lifting anymore. Like I used to do loads with judo, my wrists are fucked. Mm. Like I genuinely can't do cleans now. I've just not got the mobility in my wrists at all. But um, like at all we were training, was unreal s and coach. Like I've had loads of issues, like bad hips, bad elbows, bad shoulders, like not massive injuries, but just like, Niggles. yeah, like my hips got that bad at one point and I'd take my lad to the park and like, we'd be walking for 10 minutes and I'd have to sit down. So just getting some like mad sharp pains in my hips to the point where I thought like, I'm probably going to need some sort of hip surgery when I'm in, finished with competing and that. But I've got, basically we start now with like loads of um, mobility work, loads of, like rolling out and you're like, he'll have like a foam roller, he'll have like a, ball about that big and then you'll have a real small ball so you're either usually like rolling out your quads your IT band your hip flexors um, and the one on the back of your ass and that gets really tight mm -hmm. and then the same on your shoulders you do like pec here back mate honestly you've got rid of all my issues so we do that for about 15 minutes before every session so basically Monday's normally lower body and Wednesday's normally upper body so if we're doing the lower body, I'll roll out the lower body for 15 minutes. And then the session's normally like, I normally do one really heavy lift, whether that's a deadlift or a squat, variation. So he's just changing the, like, the way the trap bar is or what type of squat I'm doing changes. Sometimes it's two legs, sometimes it's single leg. Then we'll work some hamstring, we'll do some anti-rotational stuff for your core. So we're always mixing core in with it as well but not like aesthetic core exercises for your abs and that, but like <laughs> isometric stuff. Um, and then we'll do some plyometric stuff. And then the upper body's more or less the same. It's like um, a pr pretty heavy exercise for your push and your pull. So it might just be like a cluster set on bench press and then some weight pull-ups or something. Um, we do some shoulder work. Like the shoulder work tends to be more volume based rather mm -hmm. than weight. We do quite a bit with bands, quite a lot of anti-rotational uh, anti stuff again, quite a lot of isometric work and a little bit of plyometrics in there and he just kind of rolls it. Yeah, yeah decent, mate. It's yeah. good to hear that the fucking, the, um, the more rehab -y stuff got rid of all those niggles. Because I think that's, that's massively underrated, I think, that type of stuff. Yeah, yeah. honestly, it's helped me loads. Like, like, when I went to him, I was like, I need to do something on my hips before mm. even doing a strength conditioning because if I can fix these, I need to fix them because it's becoming like, it's becoming like when I was wrestling, it got to a point where I couldn't do foot sweeps anymore because like the contraction of my adductor mm. when I was going for a sweep would be like eight out of 10 pain. So I just completely threw them in the bin, like I wasn't doing them anymore. Um, if someone was like moving me fast and my feet had to actually contract and move fast, all the adductors and that mate were just like, that's fucking horrible. I genuinely thought I was at risk of like tearing an adductor at any mm. point, but he's, he genuinely got rid of it all. Yeah, happy days, mate. Good. And how about your nutrition? Is that something you give much thought to or do you just pretty much eat what you want? I do eat what I want now, mm. um, but I do eat well. Because like the way I have the look at nutrition now is just like, if I want to eat some shit now and then I'll eat some shit. But it's like I train every day. So like I kind of eat so I can train well mm. anyway. And I know if I'm going to eat loads of shit <laughs> the night before, I'm gonna train like shit in the morning and then for feel like shit. Yeah, you? you feel horrible, don't you? And if I train like shit, it just ruins me whole day because I just can't get it out of my head how shit I just felt at training. So I kind of eat to train well, um, and I get help with that as well because I'm sponsored by a company called Prep Kitchen who give me like prepped meals. Yeah, uh, I've which, seen them. They're, they're, mate, they're they nice look nice, mate. They're good. They're, like, honestly, they're like fucking bang on them. Like really good tasting meals, super yeah. healthy. Tells you what's in it, like calorie wise, yeah. protein wise. And then I've got a spot trained by JP supplements, yeah. which are uh, fucking class. What's he called? Jordan Peters, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, he's a fucking 
big boy, yeah. ain't he? Yeah, awesome. I've said to you about getting him on at some point. Yeah. He's a, I've, I've watched, I've, I've followed him for years because I was doing a bit of body, bodybuilding years ago and I just fucking, he's a fucking animal, mate. Yeah. He was doing jujitsu for a bit, wasn't he? Yeah, his he, missus, he, I think missus, he mate, his missus is like breaking women. You are? His missus is like breaking women <laughs> in jujitsu. She's a beast. What's she called? Uh, Karina, no? Karina, Karina she yeah. come down to our gym and she's is an it? animal, mate. Like, she, yeah, yeah. she must be fucking super strong, mate. Because she's been she's jacked, for years. Yeah. <laughs> so um, they sponsor us with supplements as mm-hmm. well. Uh, like he's five foot six, he's like 140 oh, yeah. kilos, mate. <laughs> mate, it's, it's honestly, honestly, mate, honestly. He's, he's, oh, fucking how strong is he? Do you know what I mean? You see his videos, mate, it's like fucking 20 plates a side, mate. <laughs> yeah, honestly. I'm not even exaggerating. He's got his like old gym, mate. It's, it's a fucking, joke, mate. Like, mate, it just fascinates Such watching. It's you, like, how the, he's, he's my age. He's like, your age, my age? I'm not sure how old he is. Mate, he's only like 32, 33, right. yeah. yeah. He's only like 32, 33, yeah. mate. He's a fucking animal. Yeah. But all these supplements are class as well. They're all like pharmaceutical yeah. grade stuff. He knows his shit, though. Yeah. And like, Mate, they give you so much. Like they give you, like he, he'd say himself, if you got him on here. Like, they give me that much that I can't spend it. Like, <laughs> they give you like four hundred quid a month mm. to choose supplements with. Right. Okay. It's like I, I'm not a bodybuilder. Like I, I can't spend four hundred quid a month on supplements. Yeah. So it's like these with trousers here. Like I just take all these clothes and that as well. <laughs> but yeah, they help me like basically because I'm like training teaching all day mm. and I have a little slot in between I'm just throwing my food at microwave eating that Yeah. and I've got my protein shakes in between so they're mm. literally like they make it easy for me to keep on top of my nutrition as well yeah bear with me did you spend some time out with John Danaher and, and those guys when yeah. was that that was that'll be about th- it wasn't that long ago three or four months ago okay. now. can you yeah. tell us about that yeah just like I kind of felt like because I had some stuff coming up I got asked to do Pilates Grand Prix then I got asked to do quintet. Um, I just thought I'd like to just focus on myself for a little bit for like two weeks. So I just think you work at a go for two weeks um, just for training. So I don't really know anywhere in Europe. You know, like I'm sure there's a couple of places in Poland and that because they've got some top lads coming out, coming out of there. But I don't really know anywhere off the top of my head. So I just thought the obvious ones would be like New Wave or B Team. Um, so I dropped John Danaher a message on Instagram with no, genuinely didn't believe that he'd even see it because he's so popular on Instagram. Yeah. I thought if I throw a message into his inbox, like how many of them does he get a day? So I just threw one in there and didn't think I'd hear anything of it. And about two weeks later, he got back to us and said, you can come. Because Roker's invite only, isn't it? Like some people go out there, train at Henzo, Gracie Austin, but they're never allowed to actually go to Roker. So he invited us to Roker um, and then Big Dan sorted me out with one of his mates who's got an accommodation in the area who gave me a bedroom. So I got decent priced accommodation for two weeks as well. Hired a car. They fucking burnt me dry. Like they took all my money and just absolutely robbed me. But I hired a car for two <laughs> weeks. Just went out and, um, mate, it was unreal. Just uh, they, they trained seven days a week. Mm. Like there's literally no day off at all. Train twice a day, Monday to Friday. They train once on a Saturday and once on a Sunday. The way the sessions are run, pretty much identical. Uh, it's like six to eight drills. The drills are always different. And they do some situational rounds and some open rounds with no clock. Some some days the rounds feel like five minutes. Some days they might be fucking 45 minutes. Um, <laughs> the room's unbelievable. Like It's like a who's who in that room. It's like an who's who for grappling and MMA. Like, well, one day we had Ishii on the mat. GSP, Czech Congo. And then you had like Gordon Ryan Bordeaux and Marigale, Luke Griffith, Big Dan. It's just a fucking ridiculous room. Um, so I was there for two weeks. Everyone was like super nice, super welcoming. Not only did they fucking smash you in sparring, but they pull you aside and help you with stuff at the end of the session as well. So the amount of shit I got back, come back with from there, like as a competitor and the coach, mm. it, it fucking transformed the game really. Yeah, it's um, we were we were chatting the other day, so <clears throat> we do a bit of nogi, and I've been training on and off for years, and he's fairly new, but he's getting quite fucking difficult to get hold of. <laughs> and we were just chatting about it, like to Gordon Ryan and the amount of control that he's able to to apply That's in nice. nogi. You yeah. know what I mean? And just I, when, when it's it, slippery and wet, we yeah, were saying that I just like, can't get my fucking fun. head around it, mate. Like how yeah. they manage to pin and control people so well when you're basically holding a fucking bar of soap. Yeah, I mean, honestly, like. The level of all of them is just ridiculous and he's above them. Really? Is he that good? Yeah. So it's not just the gear then? 
no. <laughs> Honestly, when you see that, it's like tech gear, and it ain't doing that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, of course, he's jacked to fuck. He's strong as fuck, and the gear is playing some part in that. But he's unbelievably technical, mate. Like, I know loads of bloke that's tech gear and they're really strong. They're fucking terrible at jujitsu. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, he is like. The whole room's like that, though. Like, you roll with her purple belts. The purple belts are like. In, in Big Dan, a purple belt. Big Dan, yeah, it's a joke, man. How good is it? He, he, just fucking, he could have took my clothes off if he wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, man. Skirt, it's scurry. He's on top of me and thinking, fucking hell, I've never felt like this before. Because you look like, at it in his matches and he just, he just fucking passes guard, whatever, gets on top and he just fucking mothers milks every cunt. Yeah. And you think, you know, you know what it's like when someone's good at that and it's fucking horrible, but him, it must be another fucking level. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Do you know what it is? They're just good at everywhere. Like, genuinely. Because, like, if you put them in a leg lock, been there so many times like they spar bottom mount positional they spar turtle positional twice a day every day so these are all like the worst positions you could put them in I mean if you put them in mount they're there twice a day if you get them to attacking turtle and you're attacking the back they're there twice a day you put them in a leg entanglement they're there all the time with the best people in that area so it's just like I think they have that much confidence in all areas like, I know it because I just apply it to my stand-up. Like, I'm really confident in my stand-up to the point where if someone shoots a double leg, a single leg, snaps me down, that I can not only kill it, probably counter it, which fully allows me to just not give a fuck and just go at someone. And I feel like that's how they are with grappling. Mm -hmm. They're just not bothered what you Wherever actually you do. Are, yeah. Like, if they walk at you and you put them in an entanglement, like Bordoni got put in an entanglement with O'Flanagan and just tapped O'Flanagan. Like... <laughs> They ain't bothered about being in entanglements. They're not bothered about making a mistake and getting put in bottom mount. They're just absolutely used to being in all them shit positions. And the majority of people that they're fighting are not used to being in them shit positions. It's like when Madagali fought Kynan. It was like a super, super close match for like 12 minutes. Kynan kind of like shot his load and threw everything he could at him. And then Marigali got him to mount, and as soon as he got him in mount, he tapped him about 30 seconds later. It's just, the room's ridiculous. And when you're in that room, you then realise that Gordon's like levels above that room though as well. Do you like, realise that while you're in yeah. there? Yeah. Yeah. Well, like a session finishes and Gordon will sit in the corner and like them world-renowned lads are coming up asking him technical questions. Like he's just on his own level. Like no one's, in my opinion, no one will ever beat Gordon unless he continues longer than he should mm. like it's not close like when everyone's saying like Nicky Rod's going to be the first person to beat Gordon that is just absolute bollocks because I've fought Nicky Rod and I've rolled with Gordon <laughs> I felt fine with Nicky and I got bummed by Gordon <laughs> so it's just never happening like it's not even competitive like I think the only way that could possibly be competitive is an EBI rule set where Nicky Rod could just stall 10 minutes take it to overtime then you allow him on your back. Like, yeah, and he's a mong. Open so submission just match. It's just never happening. Mm. And John Danner has a coach. So our um, coach, Kenny, I spent some time at Henzel's probably 10 years ago and came back telling us about this weird guy in the basement. Um, he was like, the, at the time, he was like the best kept secret in jiu-jitsu. Now he's obviously very popular. So even back then, he was saying how good of a coach he is. How good of a coach is he? Yeah, exceptional. Just like... Like, I, I don't play loads of bottom. Like, I'm, I'm never going to play loads of bottom. Like, my whole game is, like, judo wrestling, being on top. I'm wrestling up as soon as I'm on the bottom. Like, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. That's just what it is. But, like, the amount of stuff I learned off John that I could apply within the two weeks of even being there was ridiculous. Like, I was hitting sweeps from single leg XX guard. Like, hitting tripod sweeps that I'd never hit before. Like, and it, like we'd done them in that segments of me being there and I was hitting them on legit people before I got home it was just like the way he explains it is unreal and the way he's demonstrating it's unreal and it's just the atmosphere of the room though as well it's like everyone is just there to learn like mm. they don't play music it's like absolutely silent is it? oh mate yeah <laughs> it's like silence but it's weird it almost creates its own atmosphere in there like everyone everyone's just like so focused yeah, it's not because that's what the I find that's a massive difference. Is like 
our gym and the majority of gyms in the country or nearly probably every gym in the country it's like we have a small team with our gym within our gym that trains full time but our gym is still for everyone so like our full timers will come in on an evening they've already trained in the morning they'll come in on the evening to train hard and they will train hard and they will get what they want out of the session but there is still 30 other people on the session that are probably not as focused they're just recreational they're there to have a fucking chat learn a bit of technique have a laugh and it's just different you know like you go in roker it's invite only it's like everyone is there because they just want to be one of the best in the world like it just creates a different atmosphere and like a really fucking good learning environment so i just felt like i was picking everything up so quick mm. What's the what's the intensity of the training like there? Because you feel like if there's loads of guys there that are looking to to be sort of top draw, then potentially there might be a little bit of ego bashing going on. Do you find that or not? Yeah, I didn't at all. Did you not? Honestly, it was like one thing that shocked me was you know like there's this massive talk at the minute about you shouldn't drill. It's like I don't agree with that at all. I think that's just like people trying to put their own spin on it to like try and like bring out something special within jiu-jitsu that's not been seen before when there isn't a secret it's like it's already been done like every like olympic medalist that i've seen training judo drills every fucking day every like top jiu-jitsu competitor that i've ever met drills every day and new wave were the same like everyone's saying i oh, shouldn't static drill every day i uh, shouldn't static drill at all anymore like they're just static drill every morning every night six to eight static drills and then they spar um when they spar it's hard but it's so safe like no one got injured like in the whole time i was there and there's some volume there in two weeks you're talking like 28 sessions with about between an hour and an hour and a half of sparring on each one so you're talking a lot of volume and there wasn't even one close injury like it's super safe like they even have a rule though where like if you've got a submission on like a full submission i just hold it for three seconds and you should tap because if like the, what they said was if i have a heel hook for three seconds i've snapped your leg in reality um and if you're not tapping no one's gonna like say right he's not tapped so i'm just gonna snap it which i've seen happen <laughs> um yeah like the sparring wasn't it wasn't no one was like trying to prove out it's like a it may honestly it's like a massive learning environment like even when they spar you feel like people are playing certain games because they want to get better in that area yeah. like i rolled with god and he just wrestled me mm. and then i spoke to so i can't remember who i was speaking to after it like, oh did you go with gordon today he said yeah they were like oh did he just wrestle you I said yeah he's like yeah he does that because you're good at wrestling he'll just grab you and wrestle you and then if he's good in guard he'll go into his guard and <laughs> that's fucking mental yeah, really though isn't it like you're just attacking people and challenging them at the best area of yeah. their game do you feel like Gordon being there almost like polices to some extent I think it's John is it John I think they fear him yeah, yeah okay. like mate he's got a temper mate has he like, yeah like I was laughing my head off because like when, like they, they call it in judo as well like, you know like you practice on you'll demonstrate on a partner and he uses the same lad all the time as his partner um, and if the lad just like got one thing wrong he'd like slap him or <laughs> just mate, slap honestly him. it was just so like but the first time he's done it he's like and the lad's so good as well like the lad's so technical but because John is so like mate some of the techniques John does he's like mind blowing he'll like walk in the room and he looks like he's struggling to walk he's got like his knees don't look great his fucking back's like hunched over the second he starts teaching jiu-jitsu or wrestling, it's like the smoothest technique I've ever seen. <laughs> He's like, Isha is a judo Olympic champion and John Danaher is stood there teaching him an Uchi Mata. And Isha's like, oh yeah, like appreciating it. Like the bloke looks like he can barely walk when he walks in the room, but his technique is fucking ridiculous. And uh, <laughs> yeah, I think it's John because this lad, like super technical, this lad. And... Um, Mate, I'm talking like he might put his leg there instead of there. And John's like, what the fuck are you doing? It's just like, <laughs> but I, the first time I seen it, I just like started laughing because I thought I've never heard him even swear before. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And like, even when he swears, it's in the same tone as when he just <laughs> teaches. So it was just fucking hilarious to me. And I've started laughing and like, I was the only one laughing. 
you know, like oh, it was just really? a normal and day in that. <laughs> yeah, the room's completely flat. Yeah, you can't like, like, looked around the floor. Yeah, I shouldn't be laughing. <laughs> yeah, it's, so I think it's John there. Yeah. He's not taking any shit. Everyone says room. that they've done that. You hear things, don't you? That say this and that about. Um, Craig Jones was on about the one where. Uh, 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 it was um, I heard Gunner. Craig Jones Gunner yeah it was Gunner wasn't it saying Brad about when he broke his yeah. leg walking yeah. fucking yeah the more you hear about him the more you can believe it yeah yeah he seems like a mad book but he was mate he was so nice as well though like he's like super quiet and like kind of kept himself to himself but every now and then he'd pull you over and speak to you one to one and when he did he was like so funny like I wouldn't expect it at all like proper banter but he knew everything he was like talking to me about the judo worlds and who won it in like 2005 and i was thinking fucking hell like, i don't know if you're right or wrong though i'm just gonna not he's <laughs> yeah. just going yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. he was good wasn't he yeah <laughs> yeah it's fucking class um mate and then just real quick on your own sort of training so i know you've got um obviously your online academy yeah. um i think you recently done i saw as well that you've done like a uh an instructional for fat fox I did that. And then Danny was really interested in that. Yeah, I was. So do you, wanna, do, you wanna chat a <laughs> do you want to chat a little bit about, yeah, I guess your academy, your sort of your, your, your school um, and your instructionals and everything else? That's yeah. So um, the academy that I've got now, it's it, like it's, we've kind of tried to make like a one-stop shop for everything that a grappler or a coach would need. So I've just thought about it from my perspective, like if I'm grappling or I am a coach, what I would need in one area. And we have got everything on there. So basically like I more or less get every video, every session that I teach at my gym videoed. Um, so every session that I teach at my gym will obviously like, like I've been doing in these seminars while I've been here, be on like a specific subject. So say like we do front headlock, it might be six to eight drills on front headlock that night. That'll go straight onto the academy. Um, next day, we might do six to eight drills on cradle. That goes straight on the academy. So as a coach alone, genuinely, like if someone's got their own gym and they literally just want to follow a program, they will just get a full program on there of what I'm doing every week. Um, but then on top of that, like literally every seminar I do goes on there. So I'll get all the seminars video and just put it on a link straight onto there. All the training camps that I run at my gym, go on there so that's like each time it's like four sessions over a Saturday and a Sunday goes on there we do six of them a year um, all the mini instructionals that I've done including the fat foot one they're all on there so people used to buy them individually where now they're actually all on that mm -hmm. programme um, I've got 16 weeks of actual strength conditioning programmes on there so you've got like eccentric for four weeks isometric work for four weeks concentric work for four weeks and you've got a power phase, which will help people peak to a tournament. So realistically, people could sign up to that, do start 16 weeks of programming, and then just go back to the start and do it again. And you'd never need to do different strength conditioning. That'll just be your strength conditioning covered. Um, we've got recovery protocols on there, like recovery eBooks. So if people need help with recovering between training, that's on there. We've got nutritional advice. We've got a WhatsApp group. So if people are like, watching and trying the techniques that we're doing from the site in their own gym, or they're doing a tournament and they want to video the shit and put it in the WhatsApp group. I just give them feedback on the techniques and if they need to go more in detail with the feedback, then I do videos on my own after training in my gym, put that back in the WhatsApp group to help them out. So it's almost like online coaching a little bit as well. Yeah. And it's nine pound 99 a month. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, it's very cheap, yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, that's it. And then obviously my gym's Carlson Gracie Hall. Mm -hmm. um, it's a full-time gym. So we have grappling MMA every morning. We have grappling every night, um, some form of striking three nights a week. Monday to Sunday, like it's open all week. I personally coach Monday to Saturday. Um, we allow all visitors from everywhere. We get loads of visitors all the time. Um, if they want to come and train for a week or two. Like I said, I run six training camps a year. They're all at my gym. That's just done over a Saturday and a Sunday. They're real good cracks as well. So anyone's welcome to drop in if they want to drop in. Yeah, happy days. And then for you, mate, competition wise, you said you've got Josh Barnett coming up. Um, anything else that you got sort of in the pipeline? Not this year, I don't think, because like Barnett's next week. So I think that's like 28th of October, I think mm -hmm. it'll be. Um, and then like the back end of the year, then November and December. It'll just be like 
coaching. Yeah. Like some of the lads have got some MMA fights as well. So I kind of want to like get away from looking at my own training and really start helping them even more than I already am. Mm -hmm. uh, getting ready for them fights. I've got loads of seminars as well. I've more or less got a seminar every weekend by one weekend from now till the end of the year. Um, and then next year, I'll probably try and look at some more matches on Polaris. Mm. I've been asked to do a match in Australia on um, Subversion or something like that. And then I'll probably try and jump in the ADCC trials again in mm. March or February, whenever it is. Yeah, decent. And mate, do you want to give uh, like thanks or shouts to any sponsors or anything? Yeah, mate, just all my sponsors, so like Progress, obviously for all my jujitsu gear, training gear, Train by JP for all my supplements, Prep Kitchen for my food. I hate doing this because I always forget someone. <laughs> I'll, I'll just stay clean, mate. Yeah, I've got Edge PT for my um, strength conditioning. I've got Grappler's Soap for my bacterial stuff because I've been struggling with fucking mm. staff all the time I think that is it mate I've got Golden Drip they give me some IV drips after I've made weight or whatever for Polaris I thought um, that was like a jewellery like sort of <laughs> no, a bit of drip mate do a few Rolex and just keep, <laughs> them, keep them in the cupboard until I can sell them um, but I think that's it mate yeah, yeah. in terms of sponsors brilliant mate legend thanks for coming on buddy appreciate it thanks mate cheers mate thank you